Patricia Williams remembers how close she was to her mother, Aussie Antoinette Binford, and how she felt looking for her helplessly. She was loved. She was a mom, a sister, a grandmother now. My son never even got to know her, how wonderful she was. And, the, you know, it, it kills me because I, I share with him the stories about her and just how wonderful of a person she was, and he'll never experience her. In November of 1993, Aussie was 36, living in Phoenix. She was my big sister. She was my fan. She was my hero, my <laughs> idol. Her younger sister, Fernanda, looked up to her, a single mom supporting her only child. She was so amazing. She was loyal to her family. Um, she was very committed to us. She loved each and every one of us individually, but as a whole. Um, she was just amazing to be around. And like every Thanksgiving, Aussie and her loved ones gathered together as a family. But around 6 that morning, Aussie stepped out. Don't y'all eat without me, you know, I'll be right back. Those are her words, I'll be right back. Don't y'all start eating without me. They even saved her a plate, but this would be the last time Patricia saw her mother again leaving a relative's home in the area of 21st and Campbell Avenues. She got in like this little light colored car with a, a Caucasian man. She got in the car and she left. Wherever she was going, she thought she was coming right back. On Thanksgiving Day 1993, Aussie Binford fully intended on returning to her family to feast for the holiday. Instead, she got picked up by a small white two-door car, never to be heard from again. Nearly 30 years later, we still don't know who the driver is. In a time when ring surveillance cameras did not exist and cell phones were not commonly used, police did not have any leads in Aussie's disappearance. Aussie is completely off the grid. Um, we haven't found anything that indicates she's still alive. Detective Stuart Summershoe took over the case in 2012. By then, Aussie's case had turned cold. We lack a body, we lack a scene, we lack all the traditional elements of a crime. Summer Shoe says Aussie did live a high-risk lifestyle. He suspects foul play, but the challenge is discovering what happened once Aussie got into that car, where she went next, and who exactly was last to see her. Questions Patricia has wrestled with since November 25, 1993. Pretty sure she thought about me when whatever happened. I just feel like that because I was so connected to her. I knew she was gone. Police say Aussie wore a pink miniskirt and a black collarless dress shirt with ruffles on the cuff that day. She stood 5 foot 1, weighed 120 pounds, had the name Michael tattooed on the back of her right shoulder, and she was missing her right index finger. If I see a black woman about her height, mm. I look and I slow down so many times to see if it's her. For now, the long wait for closure continues. We have collected DNA from her family. We have a DNA profile for Aussie. It's been uploaded in the CODIS. And so that's regularly compared to unidentified remains that are found. But Patricia is grateful Detective Summershoe has not forgotten her mother. He gave us hope that somebody else is, is fighting with us. And that's what I appreciate about him. There are cases that I take home with me and that I, I think about at night, and keep me awake at night. Um, and Aussie's is one of them. Knowing someone knows something about the disappearance of Aussie Binford. Before I leave this world, I want to know what happened to her. In Phoenix, Justin Lum, Fox 10 News. If you'd like to learn more about the other missing in Arizona cases, we have information on our website, fox10phoenix.com. And if you have any information about Ossie Benford's case and would like to remain anonymous, you can do so. You can contact Silent Witness at 480-WITNESS.